I'm Michael Foster. Welcome back to ILTA TV. I'm here with Scott from Epic. Scott, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm glad to hear it. What do you think of the conference so far? Uh, it's another great conference. Um, uh, it's great to see the attendance uh, at what it's at and um, just a lot of familiar faces, but also a lot of new ones as well. I'm glad to hear it. So tell me, what's new with Epic? <laughs> well, um, we're still obviously continuing to focus a lot on our core services, um, but uh, like a lot of uh, providers in our space, as well as a lot of our clients, we're continuously looking to transform. Um, I think some of the things I'd like to call out that are sort of more within um, my purview and what I'm responsible for, it's, it's really just uh, continuing to help um, a lot of our law firm clients sort of transition from, uh, not really transition from more so than really to enable their practice of law and really do that by way of uh, helping them from a business operations perspective. Perfect. How are law firms approaching AI when it comes to things like knowledge management, compliance, anything like that? Well, interestingly enough, uh, the, I, it, I would say it's hard to identify a common emerging approach. Uh, but what I would say in terms of the law firms compared to maybe the corporate legal uh, and corporate uh, profile is that law firms seem to be um, at least adopting a strategy more aggressively. Um, and in terms of where they're looking to adopt AI or, or uh, leverage AI, uh, Gen AI and other AI technologies is uh, really in two categories. Either, again, going back to the practice of law, the, the a discovery workflow, uh, or again, the business operations aspect, knowledge management. Um, we're seeing incremental steps around things like um, billing entries and those types of things. We're also seeing it a little bit more um, in terms of um, from, a, from a technology perspective as well, um, leveraging AI to better manage the technology footprint, mostly the data footprint. Um, we see a lot of focus on reduction of risk. Um, and then probably uh, if there is an emerging um, area, uh, it's really around um, somewhat things like around data disposition, um, keeping tabs on uh, you know, the plethora of client data and data corpuses that they have uh, in that area and looking for ways to leverage AI in order to reduce that type of risk. What sort of trends are you seeing when it comes to outsourcing support for law offices? We went from, we, you know, we, we exploded for about a three-year period in basically outsourcing the infrastructure and the applications for law firms. Mm -hmm. And we went from, a, you know, less than 10 clients to over 150 in doing that. Now, and that's, you know, that's what we did for years. And now it's, um, I was just, <laughs> the meeting I was just in was really, um, I would say, sharpening the edges of our, um, our offerings around helping these law firms uh, with their AI st strategies, their cloud migrations. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a beast of a... Um, of a challenge. And we see this, there's a, I call them the one percenters of the law firms who create these amazing groups and ha are already solutioning AI solutions that are differentiating themselves and things like that. And then there's this massive amount of law firms who have a desire to do that, but don't know who can help get them there. And so um, we've brought in a number of um, really great talent to uh, sort of help those law firms navigate that. And we don't really look at it as like it's going to dig into our revenue or anything like that, but what it does is it creates that like lifelong partner and client and those types of things. And so there's a great opportunity in that pocket. And then the other thing I was talking about this morning is, you know, I've been around this for over, almost 25 years now. I know I look like I'm, yeah. 
But you look uh, great. You look great. You know, it was at one point there was obviously a managing partner and like you know the advent of like the chief uh, ranks at a law firm has been interesting over the years. And there's there's always been a, you know a chief operating officer or an information or technology officer. Now there's the chief transformation officer. Uh, and, and those types of things, but the technology sort of transformations have been long and have sort of just naturally happened in the sense now we're in this, this interesting point in time where there's just so many, so much rapid change that there's a lot of pressure on these types of chief uh, roles that I don't want to necessarily say they were coasting before, but now there's some big challenges. And I think law firms are waking up to the fact and looking internally and saying, do we have the right people at our organization to help us sort of future state our, our, our law firm? And it's a, it's, we used to struggle to have those conversations because there wasn't really a need. Now there's a ton of need and we are, they're, like we've never had people inbound reaching into us and saying, "Hey, can we set up a meeting to talk about our, you know, where we want to go?" And now that's happening, you know, pretty consistently. So it, it is, it's, it's exciting again, I guess. It definitely <laughs> so. is. It seems like we're seeing technology move faster than our ability to adopt it, which is a a really unique thing. I, uh, yeah. At least from a personal standpoint, I'm still getting used to the idea of AI. So I can't imagine what that's like on a corporate scale or at a law firm or anything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, and then you, you think about like, if I'm, if I'm at a law firm, I am super concerned because I've got 500 other companies data within my data corpus. So what does that mean? What are the ramifications? Um, how can I transform my business and not put all of, you know, unnecessary or uh, uh, unintentional risk um, elsewhere, it's, it's a big challenge. And what is Epic doing to keep themselves innovative and to make sure that they're meeting the needs that you're discussing right now? Well, I, I think uh, in terms of what we're doing is first and foremost, we're, we, we are looking at not just history from a litigation support perspective, discovery support perspective. Um, and what we're looking at are ways in which uh, perhaps one example would be how other industries are leveraging particular types of business models or technology and looking to adopt that and layer that into kind of the operation of, of law and uh, also the practice of law at the same time. And so it takes a um, really kind of a, a unique approach in terms of obviously you want to have a um, uh, a resource pool, if you will, professionals that can help deliver on a lot of those core services. I was I was talking about you know the everyday needs or to use a sports an analogy, the X's and O's, right, sure. on the day to day basis. But uh, looking f looking for ways to again bring in people that are able to bring in a perspective that can really uh, ex enhance and extend that type of an approach. Um, and, you know, a lot of this has to do with just the emergence of the variety of technologies and helping law firms navigate that. It sounds like Epic's up to some great things. <laughs> Where can folks find you? Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, of course, under Scott Berger, uh, the Epic website, um, also Epic's LinkedIn account as well. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Yeah, we're, we're seeing an, uh, uh, a, a noticeable and measurable uptick in terms of um, law firms not necessarily trying to um, reduce staff or anything uh, in that regard, uh, but really to take a step back and assess um, what their desired outcomes are, um, what resources they do have in place and how they currently operate and help in terms of um, either areas from a personnel perspective or a technology and application perspective. Um, we saw, I would say, 10 to 15 years ago, this big emergence of bringing in technology, bringing in professionals, uh, really in the support of discovery as data sizes started to explode, um, as well as uh, you know a variety of other factors started to impose the the need to do so. Um, we're also watching you know the rapid change of technology. Uh, you know the 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 uh, the big transformation into the cloud is obviously a big one. Uh, leveraging cloud technology from an underlying infrastructure, but also layering on top the, the variety of different applications that can be leveraged to enhance that technology. It's a lot to manage um, at the same time as obviously supporting the internal clients and the external clients and what they need. And so where we are um, being engaged at, a, again, a, a measurable uptick is coming in to do the assessment in terms of um, where they want to get to uh, currently what they have available to them in terms of what they've invested in um, and then how to augment that to some extent to get, you know, uh, uh, more of those desired outcomes in, in a more efficient way.